Lord, we thank you so much for giving us a great week so far. We thank you for everything that's happened. We thank you for all our specialists who come forward to share their knowledge and to help us to know how to be better, um, both spiritually and physically. I thank you for every single person in this room. And as we begin this meeting, may we be blessed beyond what we could ever ask or imagine. Um, fill our voices now and may we sing praises to your honour and to your glory. Amen. Amen. All right, so for all those who are not Adventists, I'd like to especially welcome you to this meeting. Um, as Adventists, we have been given so much information. We're so happy that you're here with us to share, to learn how to be better and to get better. And we love to sing. So um, all of us in this room, if you're happy about singing, wave to me, please. I want to hear you singing tonight. And the first song that we're going to sing is God Will Take Care of You.
where we're supposed to be. And we're going to sing our song restored at this time. Um, this is our theme song. How are we getting on? Are you liking it or are you learning it? <laughs> All right, so we're going to sing it now. God said to Moses, uh, Jethro is right, the work is too much uh, for you and there are other capable uh, individuals who are here with us from the Centurion team but we also have local practitioners who are here and so we would like to uh, just remind you and invite you to uh, meet with these individuals who are very capable, very competent and that would uh, take the burden of our brother Mayne. Is that all right? Yes. Amen. Oh, let me say amen for you. <laughs> amen. amen. <laughs> right. Okay, so we'd appreciate that very much. Uh, we look forward to our special item at this time. Thank you. Okay, so some of you may be familiar with uh, the 
sisters and the brother, although um, he's not singing tonight. <laughs> okay, the Brown family, they're from the Gospel Medical Missionary Group, the Medical Missionary Group in Scotland. And they have been one, running an amazing mini missionaries program for our younger attendees, our younger delegates. And it's been very popular. I think some of the adults may have even squeezed into some. But we're going to be um, blessed this evening with a special item from two of the sisters. We have Tia, Tia Marie. Say your names, please. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, sorry. Three. Three of the sisters, okay. We also have a compliment and possibly singing, singing as well on the keyboards. Amen. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. My name is Tia Yeni. My name is Michaela. I'm Danielle. And the song we're going to sing is called My Life is in Your Hand. Amen. 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 to have uh, Elder Naaman Wilson uh, with us this evening and we're going to invite him to come forward as he speaks to us at this time.
while they're getting that set up, I don't like to waste any time. So we'll let them work on that technical part of it and uh, use this, these few moments. Uh, Pastor Godfrey is going to help me in this uh, presentation. Uh, I always wanted to do a program with a preacher because I end up doing both. Uh, you know, they call me the doctor and the preacher. But I always wanted to have a preacher that I can bounce off of. That can, we can kind of dialogue together. So Amen. I'm blessed to work with Pastor Godfrey. I was in Romania with him. <coughs> we had a wonderful time. We did a camp meeting out there and had a big group of people there also. So Amen. he's going to join me up front. And this will be the first time we actually try to do something together like this. But Holy Spirit is one. So he'll, he'll blend us together. Amen. Uh, I want to say as we get started, uh, that song, you know, dedicate, consecrate yourself to God. Uh, that's been my story. Uh, people look at me as I travel and the amount of years that I have put into this work. and They wonder, you know, how I can recall, and remember, how do I understand the very technical part of chemistry, body function, food chemistry, body chemistry, understand the mechanism of organs in, in the body. And, and it's really technical stuff, you know, uh, that we had to go to medical school to learn. But I didn't do that. I, God moved me up in the mountains of East Tennessee, and I lived up there in the mountains for five years, and I never came down. I took my Bible, my spirit of prophecy, my anatomy, chemistry, chemistry books, and I lived up there. I built me a log cabin and I lived up in the wilderness. Uh, and I had to do that because one thing is you don't know me, you don't know my background. My background is not what you see here. Uh, in the southern part of the U.S., uh, it was a whole different lifestyle. And many young black men like me, we grew up on the other side of the track. And it was about survival. It was about uh, the, the strongest survival. And that was my life. You know, uh, to give you an idea, they called me the Count Raymond. And y'all have no idea what that is. No. It's a total abomination. <laughs> and I was that. I was totally, totally, and probably still is to some degree, but God is transforming my life. Amen. And I thank God for that. But I'll tell you a little quick story. Uh, I was always very gifted and, and successful in life. And I had a very fancy car, I had fancy clothes, and that's why they call me the Count Romain, Romain. And one day I was driving my car, limousine Thunderbird with virusonic music. I had leopard skin interior. I had a polar bear console. Yes, sir. I, I mean, they, you know, I was pretty slick. Anyway, I pulled up, and I saw a girl walking. And she looked pretty much like these young women I see around here. Very, very calmly, you know. And I said, hey, mama, can I go with you? She said, oh, yeah. Come on, just follow me. And I said to myself, this is going to be easy. You see, I've done this many times before. And as I cruise on my slip car in my fine clothes, talking to this girl. She had a <coughs> handful of books. And she led me to a house, and she said, get out and come in. I said, man, this is going to be easy. <laughs> and I got out, and it just happened to be a Friday evening. I got out, and I went, walked up to the door, and when I opened the door, there was a bunch of folks looking like you. You kind of folks. <laughs> and they was having a Bible study. Amen. And so uh, she said, sit down. I sat down and I listened to these people. And uh, after they got through, you know, you know, speaking and talking about things I knew nothing of, she said, would you like to go to church with me tomorrow? I said, sure would. She said, well, come pick me up on Saturday morning. And I said to myself, that's strange. So I went to my best friend named Curly Q. I said, Curly, we're going to church tomorrow. <laughs> he said, Rainbow Man, what you doing, man? 
You must be dating a black Jew. <laughs> I said, all right with me. You go on with me. We went to Longview Heights, Seventh-day Adventist Church in Memphis, Tennessee. And I remember sitting there, uh, listening to that man preach. And my heart was touched. Amen. And that girl gave me a book called Minister Hill. And great controversy. She said, study these books. Well, those two books transformed my life. Amen. Because at a young age, my aunt wanted me to be a doctor, a gynecologist. And so, but I went off in some other directions. But those books showed me that Jesus Christ was a doctor and a preacher. Yes, sir. Amen. And from that day forth, I wanted to be like Jesus, a doctor and a preacher. Amen. I didn't know what it all would entail, the sacrifice you would do. It, it was a major sacrifice, you know. Uh, I missed out on a lot of things in the world because I had to do a lot of catching up, a lot of study, a lot of research. And, but it's been worth it. People, I live like a multi-millionaire, and I have not a penny to spend. <laughs> God take care of me. <laughs> yes, sir. I fly all over the world. I meet people from so many different backgrounds, and they treat me real nice. So at Brother Gotham's house, he treated me like a king. Uh, I went to Germany, and they treated me like a king. And now I'm here in the UK, and Louise and her husband treat me like a king, and this wonderful ministry treat me like a king. Y'all are crazy. <laughs> you need to serve this man I'm serving. Drop it and follow him. God is walking yes, up and down these aisles and he's speaking to your heart. He said, drop it and follow me. Yeah. <laughs> and if you hear his voice, hot not your heart. Pastor, God, would you like to come up, please? Amen. 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 You know, this is a powerful testimony. Amen. We're not just hearing him speaking like this. We're just wondering where he's coming from and where he's going. I think one day we are going to understand this when we are going to be at the sea of glass. 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verses 1 says, Having therefore these promises, dearly beloved, let us cleanse ourselves from all filthiness in the flesh and spirit, perfectly, perfecting holiness in the fear of God. I think it is important for us to be able to remember this, that um, even during the time of the sufferings, we need to remember the promises of God. It's, you know, Pastor Godfrey, I, I've worked with so many really seriously ill people, and tonight I want to share some of their stories of what they've gone through and how that I had to hold their hand and give comfort to them. Many of these people I knew was going to die, but I had to point them to a battle. And this young woman that you see right here on the screen, she had cervical cancer. And we spent many days and many nights talking to her and praying with her and holding her hand. She had three children. She had a lovely husband that was a pastor. Uh, she's a pastor's wife. And she suffered so much. She's enduring a lot of pain right now. Every wiggling of her toes is an exercise of pain. As she stretched herself and pushed herself and crawled herself to the edge of the bed, to get out of bed. Every time I see that, I think about how quick we hop out of bed and we don't think about uh, the struggles others are having. But what you say with a woman like this, what she's going through, Pastor Godfrey, what kind of encouragement can you give someone like that? You know, when somebody is suffering and you don't know when the last breath is going to be taken by that person, we should always be able to remember that uh, there's Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. So it is always important to encourage such kind of a person and say, even if you're not going to make it in life, remember, there's a God who has the keys of death. And Amen. Death. So it is always important for us to encourage those people and tell them, now this is not the end of the story. Yes, we want to live now, but we should also be reminded that uh, there is also another life which is a better life after all. You know, when I got started, Pastor Doctor, many years ago, um, for about 10 years, I had almost 100% success. I mean, patients didn't die. Nearly everybody got well, and I didn't think no one would die that I worked with. 
And then they start dying. And, and I got really disappointed. I said, God, I've done everything you asked me to do. Why did this person die? <coughs> he said, remember the line of lepers? I said, yes, sir. He said, how many was healed? I said, one. He said, do you think you're better than me? <laughs> he said, if they did it to a green tree, would they not do it to a dry tree? And so I better understood that sometime God would take you high up, but then he'd bring you down and level you off. And so I think don't, don't, don't also not forget that uh, in Isaiah 55, 7, 8, God's ways are not our ways. So always we have got to remember that uh, there are some times that we have got to come to a time when the Lord says, this far and no more. Yeah. But always when we have got that trust, <coughs> it is very important. In fact, reading from, from the book on um, um, Gospel Workers, page 261, it says uh, faith is taking God at his word without asking as to why we are passing through the suffering that we are passing through. Powerful. I love that, brother. Uh, this, look at the suffering of this young child here. I mean, let's we'll start here first. Look at Christ's ministry here. simply for you to be able to see whether you know what your problem is. Mm -hmm. So that soon after that problem is resolved, you can go back and be able to thank the Lord. Mm -hmm. You will not say it was by luck or by sheer luck or anything like that. You will simply know that it is God who has done it for you. And sometimes when the Lord comes to you, he asks you a question, what do you want me to do for you? Mm -hmm. And so it is very important for us to say exactly what we want. Sometimes we beat about the bush, not telling the Lord exactly what we need. It is important for us to be able to say exactly what we need. And coming to the person who is actually in trouble, we should always be able to remember that um, Christ, who has borne the cross, is the same one who could be able to heal the city. I don't know whether you've heard what I've said. The one who carried the cross, the one who died on the cross, is the one who has given healing to everyone. So, when you are going to be meeting problems and you think that your burden is too hard, think of the one who has actually helped you until today. Amen. Think also the heavy burden that it takes when you suffer, when you're going through something. And you feel like you're going through it all along. Remember what I'm about to say. If we hope to wear the crown, we must expect to bear the cross. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
You see, we think that the road to salvation is an easy road. He became a man of sorrow. Sorrow filled heaven as it was realized that man was lost. See, God was touched. God felt the loss of Adam. And that the world which God had created was to be filled with moral doom, misery, sickness, and death. God foresaw the future of many generations, all the calamities. God saw the plane that fell from the sky. He saw the building that crumbled with life under it. God had already seen that many, many centuries before it ever happened. There was no hope uh, for the offender. The whole family of Adam must die. I saw the lovely Jesus and beheld an expression of sympathy and sorrow upon his countenance. You see, God was so touched that his heart bled for his children. This man of life was by no means one of our choosing. God called us in our poverty and led us through the furnace of affliction to give us an experience. We should be a great world to us. An example to others who should after join us in labor. You see, so when you're going through something, Pastor, you're not going alone. It's a purpose why you're going through it. So that you can be an example of somebody else that will go through that experience. You know what? Um, allow, allow me just to read this quotation from Minister of Healing, pages 476. I found this one to be very, um, very encouraging, especially at a time like this, which is 476. And it says this statement, The Lord has no place in his work for those who have a greater desire to win the crown than to bear the cross. <laughs> he wants men who are more intent upon doing their duty, upon receiving their reward. Sorry. He wants men who are more intent upon doing their duty than upon receiving their reward. Men who are more solicitous for principle than for promotion. Uh, when I'm just looking at this, I simply say, the Lord is simply saying, you want to win the crown, then bear the cross. Amen. So when you're actually going to bear the cross, you should know that the Lord, you, you know it, when somebody has a company and he has some workers, he wants more those people who are prepared to work for the company than the people who are prepared to work for the salary. Mm -hmm. So what is our motive for going to church or worshiping the Lord? In fact, I would like I would like to say here, Elder, that uh, my father is still my father, even if he doesn't buy me shoes. Amen. So God is still God, even if my life is not as much as I would want it to be. Amen. But I know that His love and His name and His title does not change. Amen. <clears throat> Our master was a man of sorrow. He was acquainted with our grief. And those who suffered with him reigned with him. When the Lord appeared unto Saul in his conversion, he did not propose to show him how much good he would enjoy, mm -hmm. but what great things he should suffer for yeah. his name. Mm -hmm. Suffering has been a portion of God's people from the days of the martyr of Abel. Mm -hmm. The patriarchs, they suffered of being true to God in obedience to his commandments. The great head of the church suffered for our sake. The first apostles and the primitive church, they suffered. Million of the martyrs suffered. And the reformers, they suffered. And why should we, the final generation, who have been blessed with a blessed hope of immortality, to be consummated at the soon appearing of Christ, shrink? from a life of suffering. 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 12. All those ones who would like to live godly lives in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Yeah. Yeah. But not only that, there is also James chapter 5, verse 10, which talks about exactly the same thing which might be important for us even right now. As we look at it, this is James chapter 5, verses 10, where the Bible says, 
Take my brethren, the prophet, we have spoken in the name of the Lord, for the example of suffering, affliction, and of patience. Behold, we count them happy, which endure. You have heard of the patience of Job, and have seen the end of the Lord, that the Lord is pitiful and of tenderness. Amen. Yes. Now you think about these dear Christians here. Some of them now are even in heavenly places. Some came up to be trophies. The blood of Christ can ransom even the sleeping dead from the grave. Some, like Moses, Elisha, went ahead in Enoch. And in the kingdom, one thing they're waiting on, and that's the perfection of the final generation. The Bible said they will not be perfect without us. They're waiting on this weak, feeble generation to come up to the high calling of Jesus Christ. Amen. If we don't do it, they would have to come out of hell. Now you see the responsibility. Now I'm not saying they weren't perfect, but I'm simply saying they're waiting, according to Paul, they're waiting on the perfection of this final generation. God must have a people they can stand in a day of trial. Amen. They can stand when there's no mediator in help to testify of the power of God to save a sinner from the damnation of hell. Amen. And Amen. this must be the generation that do that. Yes, Praise God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Revelation 14 verse 12. Here is the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and have the faith of Jesus. Amen. It is important. There was a question that was asked by John. Baptist. Are you here who is to come? Or we are supposed to be waiting for another? Remember John the Baptist was the one who heralded the coming of the Messiah. He is the one who said, Behold the Lamb of God that taketh away the sin of the world. He is the one who pointed to Jesus Christ showing the people who was the Messiah. And yet, you can imagine going to the funeral and there is no head of John. How do you do the body viewing? And if I can be able to remember this, his sermon on that day was of all the people who have been born of a woman, no one is greater than John. So sometimes when the Lord allows you to pass through the, some suffering, it doesn't mean that you are the worst sinner. If you pass through the fires and you are burnt, it doesn't mean that you are the worst. If you are thrown into life and then you are eaten, it doesn't mean that you are worse off than dying. It is only because the Lord knows what you can take. And so it is important for us to remember God is still in control. Were it possible to reach the tree of life 
in the midst of the paradise of God without suffering. It's impossible. We all don't have to suffer. We would not enjoy so rich a reward for which we did not suffer. We would shrink back from the glory. Shame would seize us in the presence of those who have fought the good fight and has run the race with patience and have laid hope on eternal life. You just think we went through just a little suffering. How would you measure yourself with the great martyrs that have died so that you can have religious freedom? Would you be ashamed to give your testimony in the kingdom? But none will be there who have not, like Moses, chosen to suffer affliction mm. with the people of God. The prophet John saw the multitude of the redeemed and inquired who they were. Mm -hmm. The prompt answer came, These are they which came out of great tribulation mm -hmm. and have washed their robes and made them white mm -hmm. in the blood of the Lamb. Christ suffered on our account beyond our comprehension. And we should welcome trials and suffering on our own account for Christ's sake. That we may overcome as Christ also overcame. And be exalted to the throne of our Redeemer. Let us consider the life and the suffering of our precious Savior in our behalf. And remember that if we are not willing to endure trials and toils and conflict, if we are not willing to be partakers of Christ, of his suffering, we shall not be found, well, we shall be found unworthy of the seat upon his throne. Minister of Healing, page 471, I found this statement to be very, very um, interesting. In Minister of Healing, pages 471, which says this, trials and obstacles are the Lord's chosen methods of discipline and his appointed conditions of success. He who reads the hearts of the men knew, knows their characters better than they themselves know them. He sees that some may have powers and susceptibilities which rightly directed might be used in the advancement of, this, of his work. In his providence, he brings these persons into different positions and varied circumstances that they may discover in their character the defects which have been concealed from their own knowledge. He gives them opportunity to correct these defects and to fit themselves for his service. Often he permits the fires of affliction to assail them that they may be purified. You're going to suffer, brothers and sisters. You're not going to get around it. Matthew, the fifth chapter, verse 11. Blessed are ye when men shall revile you and persecute you and shall say all manner of evil against you falsely for my sake. But rejoice and be exceedingly glad the great is your reward in heaven. For so persecute they the prophet that was before you. So suffering, persecution, and trials is a part of the Christian walk. There's no pie in the sky. You see, Christ will enable you to suffer these light afflictions. Take a look at this child right here. Seventeen-year-old Zimbabwean Tare has a rare condition no one has been able to cure. She has an aggressive tumor that is literally suffocating her. If she doesn't get operated on immediately, she will die. What if you had a child? What if that was your daughter? Had this incurable, disfiguring tumor that had mutilated her body. Would you not do everything humanly possible to help her? People are going through things in this life, people. God has left his church to answer the cry and the prayer of the suffering world. The sins of the world is laid at the door of the church. Hmm. If we don't answer, then those sins will be laid at our door. You, didn't, you weren't called in this faith to just come to church on Sabbaths. Enjoy the comfort of fellowship. Your Christian walk can tell more than that. Your Christian walk entails a complete sacrifice. 
And we all need to make a full recommitment that God, I'm going to do better. Amen. I'm going to serve somebody else instead of myself. Amen. Amen. I think we are too comfortable in our churches. <laughs> yeah. You know, when you look at uh, such kind of a situation and you ask yourself, uh, how is the mother resisting just looking at the child like that? And if we know how to help and we have the, the message right there at our fingertips, why can't we use it? And if we can get it, why can't we hunt for it and be able to use it so that we may reduce the suffering? Amen. Do you think those people after they have been healed, they'll forget about your God? No. You take this man here, you know, it's, it's a difficult case. It's tumor set and wrapped around a major artery running to his brain. It's a good possibility in trying to remove that tumor Otter's going to rupture and he'll bleed to death in minutes. It's going to take faith to remove that tumor. And it's going to take the skill that only the great physician can give. Amen. And so these are the cases you deal with regularly. Cases where cancer eating away this woman's face. And people say, well, I, I, God called me to be a medical missionary. That's good. God called me to be a medical missionary physician. God taught me surgery. God taught me how to make my own chemotherapy out of botanicals and herbs that is better than this cytotoxic chemo that destroying people's lives. God taught us how to make our own radiation machines with no radium in it hmm. that don't have any cytotoxic effect on the system. God taught us how to uh, teach people. I see Sister Yvonne and her sisters there, and I'm so blessed to see them. And I see how that, uh, working with them, how they was able to work with her sister there and, and help pulling this tumor out of her body. And I hope that sometime I can get up here and she can share a story with you that people say, well, I can't do what you can do. They did it. And they have a lot of experience. And they've done a wonderful job. Her sister's sitting here tonight. Amen. Yes. They've given up on her. Amen. But she's a living testimony. Amen. That the power of God can use an ass to save a, a, a false prophet. And if he can save an ass, if an ass can save a man, then what can you do with a man? Save a man. Amen. Yes, sir. Amen. Psalms 32. Verses 8 as this statement. Thank you very much, Elder, for that statement that I've just said. It is important for us always to remember that it is God who does all these miracles. Amen. And so let's always remember, let me just read this one, Psalm 32, verses 8, where the Bible says, I will, instru I will instruct thee and teach thee in the way which thou shalt go. I will guide thee with mine eye. I think this is important for us to be getting hold of some of these promises that will give us the courage to go on. And God will reward those promises. I mean, those efforts that we have done. You know the reason why I'm showing you this? Mm -hmm. I'm showing you this because I want you to be touched with these people feeling. Yeah. These people suffering. This is a seven day at Venice with half his face ate out. And I remember I met this man and he, he said, Brother Wilson, I know you can't fix my face. He said, but can you save my eye? And I said, by the grace of God, let's see, can we save your eye? And that, just that little bit brought joy to his heart. People, y'all missing out on a wonderful opportunity. Amen. Just think, you can reenact the life of the disciples. You can walk the steps of Jesus Christ. The Holy Spirit can use you to finish this work. Yes, sir. Amen. You don't have to come from literary institutions. He can call you from the plow and mechanic shop. And he can give you the Holy Spirit. Amen. And you can finish this work. Amen. I started this work a long time ago. 
I don't know, this may not play, but it's okay. I started back with this girl. It's almost 40 years ago now. And, uh, and this is her now. Uh, and she has aura cancer of the mouth. And that's the same girl. And you can't hardly understand what that is. But let me show you another one. That's all right there. And um, I've taken this tumor out of her face, I don't know, seven, eight times. And it was stay away five, three, four, five years, come back. And I said, Sister, are you obeying God? Hmm. And she said, Yes, I'm eating right. I said, Why you got that deadly toxin in your hair? She said, what do you mean? You got those chemical perms and conditioners, and that's the reason why you have that problem. My Lord. I said, you need to be pleased with what God gave you. Amen. God gave you natural stuff. Praise God for that. <laughs> yes, sir. You can't improve on God. See, so these chemicals yes. that are so harsh that they have, have gloves and masks on to put it in your hair. Mine. You don't have nothing on my, my, my. And it irritated her skin and it caused her to have oral cancer of the face. That's her right there. After I rebuked her about putting these chemicals in her hair, she said, Brother Wilson, I got it out now. It's too late. Mm -hmm. Look at her hair now. Look at her hair there. That's not her natural hair. Look at it now. That's her natural hair. But you can exhaust the mercy of God. My Lord. She said, can you take it out one more time? I said, since I can't move it, remove it this time. I said, if I try to move it, it's going to cut off your ability to breathe. You will suffocate with death. She eventually died. Doctors gave her six months to live. She was still alive in 2014. That was nearly 40 years ago when they said she had less than six months to live. So God gave her plenty of time. So this man here, he was out in Washington State with a big tumor sitting on the side of his face. And I thought about it and I said, Isaiah, the 38th chapter, verse 19. How Isaiah took a lump of figs and laid it as a plaster on the tumor. And he said, and he shall recover. Amen. He didn't say maybe. Mm -mm. So now I'm thinking, uh, Pastor Godfrey, that this is proof positive. Mm -hmm. time God said, he shall recover, I want to use that ring. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see what I'm saying? Because I'm going to hold God to his word. He's no respected person. Mm -hmm. And if he bless Isaiah and Hezekiah, will he not consider me? And so I've been using that fig poetry a lot. Yes, sir. And if you know somebody got a tumor in their body, use God's own remedy. Amen. Get you a lump of figs, cut it and heat it up real hot, and lay it on the tumor and wrap it securely and claim it. And God, you said, yes, your sir. word said, He shall recover. Amen. Amen. So you don't, when you look at that person, you say, Be ye healed. You are healed. Amen. You said. Because God said it. You know what I mean? Y'all are scared to say that. Because you're scared he ain't going to get healed and you're going to look like a false prophet. <laughs> Forget about that. Rebuke that demon. Amen. I, wanted, I wanted to say, you know, there are two lessons that you've just brought up right now. Number one for the physicians. In fact, number one for us who are weak and who are suffering. In other words, for the physician. And for us who, who are suffering, if you read Job chapter 34, verse 31, um, 34 verses 32 the Bible says that which I do not know show thou me and if I have done any iniquity I will not do it again so I think it is important for us to remember that uh, to have that attitude of saying Lord teach me that thing that I do not know like we are talking about the sister whose tumor was received was removed about 5-6 times um, if only she could be able to remember that verse Lord, that which I do not know, teach me. And if I've done iniquity, I'm not going to repeat. I think this is also our, our problems today. We normally go back again after we have been saved. Many think that when they begin their Christian life, they will find freedom from all wants and difficulties. 
But all who take up their cross to follow Christ come to the rapid end in their experience. Mm -hmm. Life is not all made up of green pastures and cooling springs. Disappointments overtake us. Privation come. Circumstance occur that brings us into difficult places as we follow the narrow way. Mm -hmm. Doing our best as we think. We find that grievous trials come to us. We think that if we must have walked by our own wisdom far away from God. That's what Job thought. You know, his friends thought they, they thought Job had walked away from God. And they said, man, you must have done something bad that God is letting this happen to you. But these grievous trials came to Job so it could perfect Job's character. Conscious stricken. We reason that if we had walked with God, we would not have suffered so. But of old, the Lord has led his people to the rapid end. And he may choose to bring us there also in order to test our faithfulness and loyalty to him. In mercy to us, he does not always place us in easy places. Well, if he did, our self-sufficient would forget that the Lord is our helper. In a time of necessity. Mm. Wow. Brother Scott Turner, he's here. And when I first met Scott Turner, I saw a lot in this young man. And his mother was a dear friend of mine. And she prayed that Scott would give his heart to the Lord. Scott was in the Hollywood atmosphere. You know, he's a very handsome young man, and girls that love him to death. <laughs> and that's a liability. <laughs> so you're ugly like me, you, you, you're all right. But everywhere he went, these girls flocked at him. And so it made it difficult for him to serve the Lord. But his mother prayed for him. Amen. And so, I told the mother that I would work day and night to bring him to the Lord. It took 20 years. My Lord. That's the Scott y'all see walking around. 20, I don't he may be in here. It took 20 years. Where is he? You know I'm telling the truth. Amen. Amen. 20 years. And today, that is a medical missionary. Amen. 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 That young man committed his life to the law. Amen. And so when the elders stood up and said, there are other capable people, God has raised this man up. God knows I'm not going to be here always. <laughs> and then when my time comes, don't y'all fret over me. I done had a good life. Okay? And, and if God see to lay me down, I'm going to get my rest. <laughs> and I ain't going to murmur about it either. <laughs> <laughs> but God had raised this young brother up and that young sister up right there and my son I'm right there Amen. The, 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 the joy of my life Amen. and raised him up to carry on his work and God has raised many people in these different ministries to be yes, sir. Amen. and so the work going to continue it's not dependent on us depending on our connection with God. He calls it the joy of my life. I don't know whether you hear that one also. Amen. The joy of my life. Amen. The joy of the joy of my life. Amen. Seeing such kind of patients and working not only for them to be healed but also for them to be saved. Yes. And the Lord put in us that joy also. Scott went to work with this man here in St. Lucia. He, he never graduated, by the way. He never did. Uh, he was two years into the train, and I looked at him, and I said, you need to get out of here. I said, you need to go somewhere and get some, some more experience. So I, I made him leave after two years, I mean two weeks of school. Sent him to St. Lucia to work with this man. Now, this man was a very popular man. I mean, you know, people love to come over his house and fellowship. You know how y'all do on Sabbaths. Because he's an elder, and everybody liked to flock around him. 
But he developed this horrible tune. Now the only company he got is maggots and flies and stink. You know, people don't like to be around him. <laughs> God had to go and take care of this man, bathe and treat this man, and it helped develop his character. It really did. And that was the greatest thing God could have encouraged me to do is let him go work with this man. He worked with that man and did a marvelous job with him. This is another case. A girl here had a tumor just breaking out all over her body. Big tumors breaking out. This is a Christian Seventh-day Adventist. People say, well, she must eat meat. No, this was a, a vegan. No. Everybody I have showed you was vegetarian vegan. They was not eating no flesh. The man with his half face out, he didn't eat no flesh. He was a vegetarian, he was a vegan. You think because you're vegan, you're exempt from disease and sickness? My Lord. Do you know Ellen White had breast cancer, eye cancer, skin cancer? She had kidney failure. She had a whole bunch of problems. Satan know what she was about, and he brought as much affliction on her soul as possible. Yes, yes. She suffered from bowel problems, arthritis, heart problems. This lady had a lot of problems. One reason for that is when you are working for God, you're too busy trying to save everybody else and neglect yourself. You work yourself to death. But it's worth it. Mm. Lord, I'm with you always, even unto the end of the world. Amen. First Peter 3 17. But it is better if the will of God be so that you suffer for well doing than for evil doing. Yeah. For Christ also hath once suffered for sin, the just for the unjust, that he might what? Bring us to God. So why did Christ suffer so? Bring us to God. To bring us to God. Mm -hmm. So why are you suffering? To bring others to God. Mm -hmm. Because see, if you can exemplify Christ in the most horrible experience of your life, if you can raise them to my Savior living, and I love him. In a desperate moment, then that's an example of true faith and dependence on God. If you had everything laid out before you, then it's easy to serve God. Mm -hmm. I think it is also, also important for us to remember as Christians, first Corinthians chapter 10, verse 18. There is no temptation that is of partaken you except what is common to men. And God will let you to will not let you to suffer beyond what you can bear. So Amen. it is important for us to always remember that our Bibles are the ones that will give us the encouragement to go on even when we pass through suffering. Amen. Amen. The apostle explained, if a man for conscious toward God and your grief, suffering wrongfully, for what glory is it if when ye be buffered for your fault? I mean somebody's mistreating you. You take it what? Patient. If somebody abusing you, doing you wrong, slandering you, take it patiently. Why? But if when ye do good and suffer for it, ye take it patiently, mm -hmm. this is acceptable with God. Mm -hmm. You want to know why it's taking so long? I'll tell you a story here as I get ready to stop. A dear friend of mine is in Huntsville, Alabama. The man had two women. He had a wife at home, a faithful, good Christian, seven day Adventist wife. He had another wife on the other side of town. Good friend of mine. And we would go down to visit with him. And he would never be home. And we asked his wife, where is he? She said, he's on the other side of town. We knew where he was. And so we said, you ought to throw that man out and forget about him. She said, I love my husband. I'm praying to him. I'm praying to God save him. And I couldn't understand him. That man came down with diabetes. He lost one hand. I mean, one arm. He still went over to the other one. He lost one leg. He still went over. He lost the other leg. The wife, the second wife decided that 
She didn't want a half of a man. <laughs> she loaded him up, brought him home, and parked him in the front yard in a wheelchair. And he out there hollering for his first wife. Mercy. She go out there and roll him back in the house. I'm telling y'all the truth. Wow. Roll him in the house. We come to visit again. And she said, Brother Wilson, Brother Wilson, guess what? I said, what? God has answered my prayer. <laughs> <laughs> I ain't seen no greater love than that. <laughs> and she was happy. Amen. My, my, my. <laughs> God is good. <laughs> Any closing thoughts, Pastor? Um, for God's son of the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but even the last life. The only way in which we can be able to show that we love God is by being prepared to give our lives for our friends. May this be our thought even in this evening as we've been dealing with these issues of the people we have been, who are still suffering. Let's always remember that uh, the Lord is still teaching us lessons that there's a lot of work to be done outside. Can you imagine how that if we would look at this and then we begin to work? How many would begin to hate one another in this church? Mm -hmm. And how many people would start would, would continue gossiping mm -hmm. one with another? How many people would go and smile in the front and then stab you in the back? Mm -hmm. How many people would continue to do that? Especially when you know that uh, when you are going to uh, um, the following evening, you are supposed to be looking at somebody who is suffering and you need the help of God. Just to tell you this story that uh, two carpenters um, in Romania, they were actually going to, to do carpentry ministry. So there were two of them, <clears throat> but then this day they decided to fight. So they fought before they went. They quarreled. So they said, they said, okay, fine. So, you are you, I am me. But we still have got to do the carpenter work. Mm -hmm. So they went to do the carpenter work. When they reached this house, the lady was there because they had been there before. Kept on looking outside. And then asked the question, where is the third person? Mm -hmm. And this lady, they asked, um, which third person we have always been to? No, no, no. You've been coming with a very handsome young man. Where is he? Today I'm not seeing him. Where is he? <laughs> and automatically they knew what had happened. Who is that young man who was coming with them? So they had to go outside and first of all resolve their problems and then finally go inside. I don't know whether finally the young man came with them or not, but at least they knew what was their problem. Yes. Maybe even with us, if you, we might not be knowing uh, who is walking with us, yes. but the world sees and knows. That's right. And so let's always be able to be remembering that uh, it is God's desire that we may be united as Amen. we continue to do this work. In fact, it's demonic elder for us to be people who are fighting one another. And at the same time, we say we are waiting for the second coming of Christ. Yes, sir. It does not work. You know, Pastor, I think about the diversity of the people that you have been I think about how the false teaching theories and philosophy has really devastated this church. There's all different types of Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. There's Lunar Sabbaths, mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. They're giving up the Sabbaths to keep the Lunar Sabbaths. Mm -hmm. There is no Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists. Mm -hmm. There's God do not destroy mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists. There's shepherd rods, mm -hmm. Seventh-day Adventists. I can keep on going. Mm -hmm. There's one faith mm -hmm. and one purpose. Mm -hmm. The gospel is pure and holy and sacred. Yeah. And Satan is trying to destroy yes. one mm -hmm. belief. I'm going to share this with my closing thought. The Luther, Luther had this to say. They have already destroyed my honor yes. and my reputation. Mm -hmm. One single thing remains, mm -hmm. 
is my wretched body. Let them take it. They will thus shorten my life for a few hours. Amen. But as for my soul, they cannot take that. Yes. He who desires to claim the word of Christ to the world must expect death at every moment. That's the Christian marching papers. Thank you all so much. Amen. Let us pray. I was kind of living for them which are in heaven. Lord, we are so moved by this message. When we look at ourselves, we ask this question, who shall be able to take up this position? Please keep your other mama also still alive. We still need you. And help us to quicken our steps to learn these precious and important truths that you have already given to our church. Help us, Lord, to stop fighting one another and start working for them. Thank you, Lord, for reminding us that you are going to be with us as long as we are faithful. Remember us, Lord, in your kingdom. But till then, allow us to carry the cross until you come. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I want to just say a little more here. I just want to thank the Lord for allowing me to be here. I want to thank the Lord for giving me a wonderful, humble wife. And Lord, I know you have given me this woman, Lord, to extend my usefulness and my strength. And Lord, I am so thankful. Lord, bless her heart. Amen. And bless our union. Thank you so much in Christ's name. Amen. Amen. I know we've been blessed and we've been given instructions and we know that we have a calling on our lives and may God give us the wisdom, the desire and the strength to fulfill that calling. Let us stand as we close our uh, meeting this evening with our theme song, He Heals and Restores. Sing that to
truly the Spirit of God was in this place. Let's just bow our heads. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up the light of his countenance and cause his face to shine upon you and give you peace now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. I believe we have some announcements just before we... As the announcements are coming, um, just to remind you as well, for those of you who are unaware, we are very practical at this conference and we have exercise sessions. You've been doing a lot of sitting, a lot of um, purchasing, a lot of walking to different workshop rooms, but in the morning, at six o'clock, uh, what time did I say? Six o'clock. We are led in exercise by Lewis Harris, who's up there. Um, give her give a wave. <laughs> okay. And this morning we, had, we were blessed with 35 souls. We walked up the, no, we did stretches first, then we walked up towards the tennis court. We weren't playing tennis, don't worry. And then we did, he put us through our paces. We, yeah, he's kind of hard, he's a hard taskmaster. But he gave us alternatives. If you couldn't do the hard style, then you could have it the not so easy, not so, not so difficult. So yeah, so just a reminder, six o'clock, early in the morning, take some deep breaths. We look to the hills and then we make a steady pace towards the tennis courts. So we meet in near the foyer, so in the reception area, when you first step into Kevin Lee and um, bring some water, some comfortable shoes, and pray that it's going to stay dry. Amen. Does anyone recognize this bag, please? This handbag is left in the... Okay, lovely. There's a question, how long are we exercising for? So we meet for six o'clock. Uh, there's a grace period of about five minutes, <laughs> and then we start with our warm-ups. If you come late, just try not to. But then um, we were up at the tennis courts. So if you're not sure where to go, then try not to come late. And we had breakfast for seven, so we're looking for about a 45 minute session. Um, that gives you enough time to worship, worship, worship. That's what we have. So you are listening. Amen. We have worship at seven o'clock, devotion, and then breakfast is at eight. Okay, all right. Have I missed anything? No. Okay, so do we have any announcements for this evening before we go to bed? No, well, have a good night, everybody. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night.